the Sun Press, Toujours L'Amour. And by way of introducing Ron, I'd like to read a poem of John Ashbery's. It's called, And Ut Pictura Poesis is her name. You can't say it that way anymore. Bothered about beauty, you have to come out into the open, into a clearing, and rest. Certainly, whatever funny happens to you is okay. To demand more than this would be strange of you, you who have so many lovers. People who look up to you and are willing to do things for you, but you think it's not right that if they really knew you, so much for self-analysis. Now, about what to put into your poem painting. Flowers are always nice, particularly delphinium. Names of boys you once knew and their sleds. Skyrockets are good. Do they still exist? There are a lot of other things of the same quality as those I've mentioned. Now one must find a few important words and a lot of low-keyed, dull-sounding ones. She approached me about buying her desk. Suddenly the street was bananas and the clangor of Japanese instruments. Humdrum testaments were scattered about his head locked into mine. We were a seesaw. Something ought to be written about how this affects you when you write poetry. The extreme austerity of an almost empty mind, colliding with the lush Rousseau-like foliage of its desire to communicate. Something between breaths, if only for the sake of others and their desire to understand you and desert you for other centers of communication so that understanding may begin and in doing so be undone. Ron Paget. Thanks, Bob. I'm going to be reading some poems from this collection of mine called Toujours L'Amour. It was preceded by another book called Great Balls of Fire, which had a very beautiful jacket design by a friend of mine. So I wrote this poem after that other book came out. This is called Post-Publication Blues. My first book of poems has just been published. It is over there on the table, lying there on the table where it is lying. It has a beautiful cover and design. The publishers spent a lot of money on it and devoted many man and woman hours to it. The bookstores are ordering copies. Unfortunately, I'm a very bad poet, and the book is no good. This is called Ode to Stupidity. Duh. <laughs> Duh. I bet you never heard of Hans Hall. Hans, he was a, a heck of a guy. He had two eyes in his head and a mouth under them, and some other stuff like, you know, ears and stuff, but the best was his brains. Boy, did that guy have brains. I saw him do great stuff one day in the movie theater. He was on the screen with his friend Leo, and they were in trouble, and Hunts got them out of this trouble, and ever since then, I've been a changed man. You might describe it as a pivotal experience in my personal life, crucial at any rate. The jaws of a big pair of pliers are gripping the edge of my desk. Ah, I have learned how to make them do this. And when I go out into the street, my leg is special. Just uh, one leg. I haven't learned to make two legs special. Two. Dawn breaks over the sprawling metropolis. You drink a glass of beer at three o'clock. A light comes on. Friend, friends come and they go. The post office refuses a package. Girls lie down and are fucked by huge turtles. A voice is heard. The dictionary is opened to page 387 by a young man who pours over the entry, Hermetic. I wanders down to heroic. Quote, fixed is the term to all the race of earth and such the hard condition of our birth and a green and orange carton is discarded. Now, perception and cognition arrange these bits and pieces into a recognizable pattern, which, associated with feelings, forms a continuity, which is our life. Yes, there are jagged edges here and there, huge spaces ripped out by intruding gizmos wielded by gigantic skeezixes who come to fix gigantic gizmos. But 
Generally, it is more like the River Thames, smoothly flowing, punctuated by boats, where people raise their smiling faces and wave to you. Women overheard yesterday who said today would be cold, and it is warm. You thought you would feel bad this morning, and you do not, but the street looks chewed up. People lose their footing, their mouths open in surprise as they slip and fall. Perhaps some old person will break their hip. So, you examine the street, write a letter, organize a march, run for Congress, lead a revolution, or stood before a firing squad without a cigarette dangling between your lips. They didn't even give you a cigarette. No cigarette. And as a final mockery to your ideals, the assassins are smoking four cigarettes each, billows of smoke pouring from their faces, vision obscured, so that when their rifles expel the bullets, chickens fall from the sky, 39 cents a pound. And you are liberated by a band of compadres in white pajamas who then melt back into the wall some bullets had knocked chips from, liberated too from your social conscience or love of country, but still a wounded figure who hides back up in the hills, counting the days before he will sprout wings like Hermes and fly with his message through space and time. That's the ode to stupidity. <laughs> I feel more stupid every time I read that format, as a matter of fact. <coughs> This poem is uh, called Sweet Pea. It's a little longer than the, uh, the previous one. You are sweeter than the sweet pea that climbs high and blooms in early summer, mixed colors, pink, purple, blue, and red. Few flowers have the charm you have, and few flowers have the charm of the sweet William, but you have more charm than the sweet William, the perfection even. The sunset cosmos flames in orange and scarlet. You are more beautiful than the sunset cosmos. The mammoth yellow mum is more beautiful than the sunset cosmos, and you are more beautiful than the mum. You are more astounding than super racy glads, assorted colors, every color imaginable. When I'm with you, terrific colors exist, unknown to the super gladiolus. Colors the sunny boy or azure blue the climbing crimson glory or riotous color carnival or the happy Swiss giant pansy never attain, though they fly upward through their hybrid generations, madly seeking the brilliance that is yours, the brilliance morning glories strive to equal in their matinal wide awakeness, the pearly gates opening to trumpet, the wedding bells announcing, the moonflower glowing ethereal in its suave fragrance, the heavenly blue, ooh, there is no flower quite so blue as heavenly blue. It's blue reflected in the heavens where light comes from. And when I realize all the light that goes to make a flower, I realize how much has gone into making you whose presence is more to me than all that heaven's blue. For you are more spectacular than champagne bubbles flown from Iceland, more amazing than the presto appearing at a magician's fingertips, and more gracious than the petunia, the pinwheel spinning, the blue mist drifting in bliss, victory flying high, plum purple heavy and sensual, the wild throw up your hands elite mixture, the gorgeous foaming red ambiance of the warrior, the enormous blossoms of the cream whiz, the funny snobism of the Tiffany, more sociable than flocks, twinkle or dwarf star, more absolutely engaging than the primrose in its distant suggestiveness blooming in shade. The fantastic big blooms of oriental poppies draw wild visions from the brain, but you are wilder and more visionary than the poppy, shooting higher with brilliant trail, like the rocket snap, the magnificent tall hybrids, or the bright butterflies flying, crazy and excited. The madam butterfly with its aplomb, the sobs of the little duffer. You are more beautiful than the little duffer. You are more alert than the zinnia, more mysterious than lipstick, deeper than the deep lavender where of dream zinnias where blue magic flies, greater than the great Scott on a background of pretty rosy morn, adjusting its petals like vain fluffy ruffles, goofier than knockout mums and more of a knockout than goofy, 
quicker than blue blazing edge or atom, more majestic in gloom than the dark vibrating blue of Lamartine delphiniums, more persistent in memory than Woody Woodpecker, that blooms with a tremendous announcement, darker and more passionately terrifying than the giant Senorita, warmer than Big Smile, more marvelous and punctual than Marvel of Peru four o'clocks, whiter than the white gardenia that leans over the piano, like Oscar singing to love song, whose light pink blends into the glitters. And for me, you are even more dazzling than the most exaggerated memory of junior prom. You are more than all of these. It is as if I were to take 500 handfuls of every kind of flower, fling them into the air, and see them bloom immediately there. You are forever with me, as if my just being alive were enough to surround me with the silver flames of massive dahlias, cool and sexual as promise, the red blur of the cardinal perched on perfect stems and then gone, the intriguing comic strip sexuality of kids' climax, the blasé bare shoulder of new look or variety girl, the moonlight that shines down on D-Day. Wow, these are all so beautiful. Blue smoke over Albert Schweitzer, Whirligig and Little Nemo, Visual Illusion and Forever, Loves Me, Loves Me Not, Rinaldo on an Equal Sign, Mahayana and Angry Bumpkin, Out to Lunch, Magic Flute and Dreamboat, Sunshine and White Friendship, the quiescent sentiment of afterglow, and the yearning for the infinite that is in Bright Star. You are my Bright Star, brighter than superlative and fresher than baby's breath when it has just bloomed, and its pretty little flowers sigh in delicate profusion, nodding gently in the air, white in June and July. In June and July is where I am when I'm with you, the middle of the year, when looking back and then ahead to the same amount of days means everything is in perfect balance. You do not know if you are happy or sad, who or where you are. You are like the Senator Dirksen Marigold, now that the Senator is dead. He has become a flower. You are not a flower. Thank my lucky stars. You are a woman, a girl, a moving body of beauty. You are mine for nothing and for no reason. The rain falls, the trees stretch and yawn, the flowers fly up out of the ground and burst in zany gladness, constant as those lucky stars I bless, bless for having you. That was sweet pea. <clears throat> the next two poems are about living in New York. They're companion pieces, actually, too. The first is called Poema del City. Poem of the City. I live in the city. It's a tough life. Often unpleasant. Sometimes downright awful. But it has what we call its compensations. To kill a roach, for example, is to my mind not pleasant, but it does develop one's reflexes. Wham! And that's that. Sometimes, though, the battered roach will haul itself onto broken legs and, wildly waving its bent antennae, stagger off into the darkness to warn the others who live in the shadow of the great waterfall in their little teepees. Behind them rise the gleaming brown and blue mass of the Grand Tetons, topped with white snow that blushes come dawn and glows come dusk. Silent gray wisps rise from the smoldering campfires. Poem of Dell City 2. A light chill on the knees and uh, I sneeze. Up late, alone, in my house, winter rain against the window and glittering there in the constant light from stoops across the street. Cars hiss down from one moment to the next hour. In an hour, I'll be asleep. Wrapped in new sheets and old quilts, with my wife warm beside me and my son asleep in the next room, I'll be so comfortable and dreamy, so happy. I'm not terribly damaged or dying yet, but sailing secure, secret, and all those other peaceful S's fading like warm taillights down a long landscape with no moon at all. 
Oh, it's sweet, this living, to make you cry or rise and sneeze and douse the light. Poem. Ah, I don't know. I may not be much. It's be a mess. Personality no good. All surface, no inner strength. Poetry not any good. This poem not any good. I might die an old man, scribbler of trash, forgotten paper scratcher. But I'll tell you this. I really love to lay around on my ass just totally watching television. And doggone, that's the truth. <laughs> this is a, a longer poem called The Most Beautiful Girl I Have Ever Seen. <clears throat> I turn my searing eyeballs onto that flaming image of a perfection so great, so far beyond flawless, where values blend to participate in an impossibly real curvature of space so that everything flown away millions of years ago and returned millions of years hence is here now with her, with you, never to be forgotten, ever, as long as you live, which is forever. Forever in her face with skin so white and hair so black and smoke curling at the edges. Forever in those long, graceful limbs that move so well together. Forever in that lovely doghouse we will live in, I puffing a corncob pipe and she over the Electrolux, with two yellow clouds in the future and a free ride on the flying donkey to Mexico, where little old senoritas will grab their faces and cry, Caramba, never have I seen such beauty as is this girl, never such perfection under the earth's sky. And they will swivel their dark eyes onto her male companion, and they will say, Double caramba, holy shit! Who is this skinny, unathletic male who walks by her side, salt shakers in his hands? And I will hurl the salt shakers into the dust and shout, Go away, depressing hags. Back to your depressing hovels. And the sun will set on Veracruz, which we will have by then cleverly escaped. The same sunset occurring over the earth in, uh, uh, no, no. I go on with this dribble. Sion Ballin, sister of Kate, who was my student. Hello, lovely creature. And God damn the fucking fate that laced our shoes and then tied knots in them, leading you out the other night with your friends, and me home alone to my wife and son, two people also beyond my understanding in their incredible beauty. Something like that, I don't know. I paused here and put away the typewriter, thought of kitchen and of food, and thought, why stop now? Why not go on and see what's there beyond the will to understand oneself or anything? It's simple. I met this girl tonight and felt this thing. Came back home, sat down confused and excited, typed some words and felt my syntax slip into long, limber cadences that led me into not really much of anything. You read the book to page 397 and die. You didn't get to finish. Those last revealing pages, left unread, perhaps some future monkey trained in the art of our tongue will read and understand and visit your grave with the book and read them down a tube to where you lie beneath the ground, watching the screen and brushing concepts off the bed onto the long, long, long river that flows from the heart straight out into the terribly live and beating heart of the single person who at a single moment meant more to you than anything else. Silly poet. Silly to say such silly things. Silly to spill such words insignificant in the entire universe. Whereas Spinoza is drifting, where Los Tres Hermanos is also drifting with their musical instruments, where a Girl Scout is drifting in a green dress, where all the spirits of the past are floating along behind the sky, sucked down to fit your frame you rise up through to find them in the sky, sucked down on her. Two skies touching and floating, darkening. <coughs> Voice. <coughs> me, me, me. Voice. I have always laughed when someone spoke of a young writer, quote, 
finding his voice. I took it literally. Had he lost his voice? Had he thrown it and had it not returned? Or perhaps they're referring to his newspaper, The Village Voice. He's trying to find his voice. What isn't funny is that so many young writers seem to have found this notion credible. They set off in search of their voice as if it were a single thing, a treasure, difficult to find but worth all the effort. I never thought such a thing existed until recently. Now I know it does. I hope I never find mine. I wish to remain a phony the rest of my life. <clears throat> Tell us Josephine. The blue and white tie arrived at the man's neck through merchandising. He walked up to a store window, reached in his pocket, and inside completed the transaction. Now, as he walks away, he exercises his body. It improves his health. The blue and white stripes of the tie improve his appearance. It improves his gray shirt. A palm tree improves a desolate landscape. A desolate landscape improves empty space. And his spirits are improved if cheerfulness is an improvement. The eyes of his face now seem meaningful and happy to be so. The smile that rides below the eyes reflects the moonlight that glances off the roaring and shimmering dress of sequins, maroon sharks that flow down the body of the girl from Martinique, the girl who smokes a cigarette darkly in his mind as he walks into the darkened room and waits for his eyes to catch up with his past. Dark red almost black. The long, sharp fingernails click against the varnish smoke floats and waves on, and a lime grows cold against a cube of ice that couldn't remain solid. Cooler, the air along the floor flows along legs of table and lady, who shifts slowly in her chair to keep the blood evenly distributed. She does not like her legs buzzing unpleasantly. They rest here, then there, their surfaces smooth against the black silk that sheathes her body. Whew. It is so dark in there and so quiet. Only skin on silk, click of nails, tiny sequins crashing like tiny cymbals for which we get tiny ears, and gentle zephyrs in curls of smoke lifted from her lungs. I don't think she has any thoughts. I don't think... Oh, the man in the blue and white tie appears in the doorway. She moves her hand. The room bursts into flame. Both die in the Holocaust. Statues are erected in their honor. Leaves fall from the trees. The sap rises. The sun rises. Prices go up and people sit under the ground. The ground rises. It has wings. It is an airplane. After a while, it levels off over the clouds, cruising at an altitude of 56,000 feet and a speed of 300 miles per hour. You are alone on the plane. <laughs> There's not even the pilot. You have stolen the airplane with no one to drive it, and now you must suffer the consequences. But the first consequence is your pleasure at being alone, up so high, all silver and blue, over pink and gray cloud patches that blur to orange wisps over there, and down to a rather artificial-looking purple beyond that. Hey, could that cloud be real? So purple? Your attention is drawn to that cloud, how could it be so purple? And then your spirit is drawn down to it, utterly riveted to that flowing shape. The intensity is aural. It is awful. Oh, let me go, cloud. And poof, it parts gracefully and evaporates. Behind it, the man and the girl from Martinique are parting and evaporating. And as they do, your ignorance parts and evaporates, and you remember you're a pilot. Louisiana Perch. Certain words disappear from a language. Their meanings become attenuated, grow antique, insanely remote or small, vanish. Or they become something else such as transport. 
Mac the truck driver falls for a waitress where the water flows. <laughs> the great words are those without meaning. From, a, or, there, or, the, for, a, the, the, those. The rest are fragile, transitory, like the waitress, a beautiful, slender young girl. I love her. Want to marry her. Have hamburgers. Have hamburgers. Have hamburgers. Gentlemen prefer carrots. I'm sorry. I nearly, went, I nearly went to sleep standing on a corner today. The light turned green. People charged down into the street, arms with bags and boxes, while I stood there disappearing. And after dinner, forehead resting on the table, I saw some gentlemen eating carrots in a dining car with a landscape whizzing past outside. Really fast trees and hills, varied sights and views, and those carrots disappearing into the eaters' mouths. I raised my eyes, music on the machine, light and fall coming on. This is called uh, Ladies and Gentlemen in Outer Space. It's the last poem I'm reading tonight. Here is my philosophy. Everything changes. Oops, the word everything has just changed. As the word change has, it now means no change. So quickly that it, it literally surpasses my belief. Charges right past it, like some of the giant ideas in this area. I had no beginning, and I shall have no end. The beam of light stretches out before and behind, and I cook the vegetables for a few minutes only. The fewer, the better. Butter and serve. Here is my philosophy. Butter and serve. Thank you.